All right, guys. It would appear that we have got to have a talk about O2 extenders and uh, effectively how they affect the vehicle's performance, operation, um, I mean, could generate some actual real problems in tuning. So let's just get down to it right away. <clears throat> First off, most newer cars use Lambda sensors. It's a wideband type sensor that's inside, obviously, the exhaust system, uh, anywhere, you know, five inches to you know 10 inches downstream from the turbo the manifold the whatever is in the way cat etc etc in this example i'm showing you guys a veloster and downpipe with a factory lambda sensor inside of the exhaust stream so this is obviously where the turbo would bolt down this is where the exhaust goes comes up goes out the top of the downpipe goes into the exhaust system goes out the back of the car okay so here's my problem you see how this protrudes up this is sticking up now there's a bunch of a, a series of holes on the end of it that you know measure a, the oxygen content inside your exhaust system um, they're not fuel measuring devices they're not unburnt fuel devices they're not you know everyone refers to them as you know air fuel monitoring they know they measure oxygen that's all they do it's an oxygen sensor uh, how the ECU uh, determines what is what that's up to the ECU we're not going to talk about that we're going to talk about the extenders people are putting on these sensors and I don't know why they're putting them on the excuses range from uh, my tunes bad it runs lean it runs rich it does this it does that uh, one person says I put an extender on it to make it easier to install and re install and remove the O2 sensor guys this is just a horrible idea and let me explain to you why Exhaust needs to flow over that sensor in order for that sensor to read, right? So I'm going to pull this sensor on. I'm going to put one of these extenders on. Now, these extenders, I mocked one up right here. So it's a little one-inch extender, right? It's a double-threaded, so it's literally just going to, I'm just going to set it on here, okay? Now, what I want you to pay attention to as I screw this on, okay? Where's the tip of that? Okay, and this is only, I believe this is only inch and a half, inch and a quarter extender is what the overall height of this is. Okay, I've seen the extenders that are almost two inches long. Okay, two inches long, <laughs> that I really am not going to trust that. Okay, so here's the thing. Here's your extender that would essentially be what you buy to make installing your O2 sensor easier. So if I go to screw this on, where's the tip of the O2 sensor? Like seriously, where is it? That is nowhere near. I don't even know if I can get in there. That is nowhere near the exhaust stream, the exhaust flow. Okay, so now what happens? Let's just, for giggles, let's say you decide to go with a three quarter inch. Sorry, I gotta walk over here and grab a single spacer. Let's say you decide to go with a single uh, a single spacer. Now, I don't even think they sell anything under one inch, but let's say you decide to go with a three quarter inch spacer. That is just barely going to grab the airflow. Now, there's some, it's really difficult because will this affect the performance of your vehicle? Okay, that's with no extender. Uh, yes and no. Most of the time, if you have like any uh, back pressure in here, catalytic converter, exhaust mufflers, stuff like that, they, it'll generate enough back pressure to where that sensor will traditionally read within plus or minus, you know, 0.5, um, sorry, 0 0.05 of an air fuel ratio or lambda, sorry. With that being said, is if, the, if you don't have, let's say you're catless and you have high flow exhaust or for the love of God, you're straight piped, uh, you've removed most of your back pressure, so you're not going to see any back pressure that forces it down into that recessed area. Again, if you, you know, one of them sits about there, the other one sits like down here. If there is effectively no back pressure in your exhaust system, the flow over those series of holes, okay? The flow that moves over those series of holes, if this thing is dunked all the way down in here, it's not going to see nearly enough flow to report an accurate oxygen content. So, why do people do it? I don't know. 
uh, ignorance is bliss, uh, arrogance. Guys, I can't begin to tell you why people do some of the stuff that they do. I can tell you that if you're going to put a sensor, extender, on your Lambda sensor, please talk to your tuner. If you are expecting optimal performance, you know, from you know your all your upgrades and your modifications, and you go throw a pair of inch and a half extenders on your primary O2 sensors, which again are Lambda sensors, and they measure the air fuel coming in and out of the car, and it's a priority, that's a priority control. That priority control makes it so the ECU has to make changes based on what the O2 sensors see are seeing either one bank, two bank, three bank, four bank, I, I, I don't know how many re repetitive uh, O2 sensors or Lambda sensors they can have on some cars. I think the highest I've seen is a total of four on one car. Okay, but if you've got an O2 sensor that's buried and it's not reading accurate oxygen content, you will have a problem, okay? Rays of E hands. How many people have seen uh, walk through a, a a race car pit, or or been trackside, not trackside, but been able to go through the pits, uh, it, you know, and look at the different race cars? How many of you have ever seen an O2 sensor with an extender on them? I, I can't count a single time I've ever seen an extender on a primary lambda sensor for a car. So that should be enough to make you, you know, think a little bit about putting these extenders on. Now. Some people put extenders on the secondary O2. Secondary O2 extenders, normal, okay? 100% normal. That is normally for testing of the catalyst system. That's testing the cat that's in between the primary and the secondary O2 sensor, okay? With that testing in between those, you have an opportunity to, it has an opportunity to see the differences. If you, I don't know, running off road and you have no cat on your car and you you want to kind of fool the system into thinking there's a cat, some of these J-pipe extenders, these mini cat extensions, stuff like that will be put on the secondary O2 sensor. The secondary O2 sensor is what's monitoring for the cat. It does some fuel economy monitoring. It's kind of a testing tool, more so than it is an operational primary Lambda sensor, 100% operational function. That tells the car how much fuel it's getting. Sorry, I said fuel. That tells the car how much oxygen is running past it. Now, effectively, yes, that means it tells the car how much fuel it's getting. If you have this thing buried, and here's, what, here's what's gonna happen. If you have this thing buried clear down here, and let's say it's off, uh, you know, we're going to use AFRs. So let's say it's off one point. Instead of being 12.5, the sensor's reading, I don't know, 11.5, okay? Or it'd be reading lean. It's reading 13.5. Doesn't matter which direction it goes, it's going to be reading incorrectly. When your tuner starts to make changes, the changes can be getting made into a dangerous area. You do not want to have this off by a full point from what the factory ECU thinks it's supposed to be running at. Okay, a full point is 12.5 to 13.5, all right? That's, that's, that's scary. Yeah, I see 13.5 on a boosted car, I, I get incredibly nervous and we're like, no, there's something wrong. Okay, especially when you go in and put a particular number in. Now where the problems get compoundingly difficult and you start to see really awkward power curves and performance type output is when you have one of these sensors that works on an active lambda okay so active lambda active fuel control it goes through looks at the watt tables for lambda all the watt tables let's say are 11.5 for afr if that sensor is reading erroneously okay it's still going to achieve 11.5 it's not like the ECU can be like, no, you put an O2 sensor on your car. We know it's reading wrong. It doesn't. So if this is reading 11.5 and the actual air fuel, air fuel is 12.5 and you all of a sudden have an O2 sensor that's starting to lean out when you put a tune on it because you put a tune in there at 12.2, now all of a sudden you're in the 13s again. Guys, 
when you're doing this, okay? Make sure you're not putting extenders on your primary lambda sensor, okay? Now, how do you tell if you have a lambda sensor? Well, here, I'll make that really quick for you. Lambda sensors normally have a connector that look like this, okay? They'll have five or six wires. Traditionally, you'll have five. I got five there, one, two, three, four, five, yep. Uh, they're considered, they're called five wire sensors. Um, if you have a five wire or a six wire sensor, I, I, I don't know if we have six wire sensors that are showing up uh, on like performance cars yet. I, I do know that they have some six wire sensors in motorsports. But if you have got a five wire sensor on your car, you have a Lambda sensor, all right? Guys, I don't know if any of this makes sense. I don't know if you understand the air fuel targeting for rich or for lean. Here's what I can tell you. Okay, lean is mean. Lean will make your car fast. The lean will also make the car break. Now here's a really bad problem for the ECU. If the ECU, looking at the Lambda sensor, inside your exhaust has a hidden value and the ECU thinks it's getting a particular fuel value, air value, with that, equal, that equals a particular air fuel ratio. Now, the sensor is still sending a correct value, it's just hidden inside the O2 sensor because you put a spacer on it. When the ECU goes to correct, it's going to make a huge correction. And that correction could end in catastrophic consequences. All right, so please, if you see one of your friends put an extender on their primary O2 sensor, or you have a primary O2 sensor extender, sorry, if you see somebody put an extender on their primary O2 sensor, please, please, please tell them no, show them this video, see like, look, don't do that, all right? I hope this helps. I, you guys have any questions, you know, make some comments in the video and I'll try to get them answered as best I can.